October 18th, we'll see municipal elections taking place across Alberta. Joining us now today is Colton Menzak. He's one of the several candidates in the Lethbridge mayoral race. Welcome to Bridge City News, Colton. Hi. Now share a bit of who you are and why you decided to run for mayor. Well, I was born and raised in Lethbridge. I've lived here my whole life. I uh, grew up playing team sports and working for my grandpa's local construction company. After uh, I was done high school, I graduated from LCI. I worked on a drilling rig for 10 years and I fought mixed martial arts fights. And currently I have, live on the west side with my wife and she's pregnant with our first kid. We got two dogs and uh, yeah, life is good. And I decided to run for mayor just uh, because watching all the problems in town and you know the homelessness, the debt, things like this just keep going spiraling more and more out of control. And it doesn't seem like anyone really has an answer. So I think that I do have the answers or if I don't, I'll be able to find them or someone does or we can see what's worked before and use that. Now, one of your top priorities is to lower taxes and reduce wasteful spending, but also maintain city services. Can you explain your plan where the money would come from to maintain the city, city services with less taxes coming in? Well, I think if, if um, prices are increasing year after year, that's unsustainable. So right there, that tells you we need to restructure whatever's going on so that we can make it more sustainable. Because that's the ultimate goal is to have things get cheaper and be more sustainable. So you see in the private market, you know, TVs and stuff like this, they get through scientific innovation, they get leaps and bounds better and cheaper. So I think if we, instead of throwing more and more money at things, if we restructure and restructure the, uh, <clears throat> the services, then we'll be able to uh, make them cheaper. And through that and through other incentivized programs, maybe we can uh, make a profit instead of paying for these things, you know? Now, homelessness is a real issue in major cities across the country, not just in major cities, but some of the smaller cities, including ours here in the Windy City. Now, Colton, you would love to end homelessness, something that, of course, is easier said than done. What's your plan to really make that happen? Well, places like Medicine Hat in Utah, they use a housing first approach. And uh, as lots of people know, Medicine Hat has net zero homeless people. So the idea is you get them in housing first. That's, you know, then they're not homeless. Then they also need some sort of incentive to stay off the streets, right? Um, rehabilitation, uh, some sort of purpose, programs, jobs. You know, we got to set up programs for these people to succeed so that they're not just putting back into the system and going back to jail and things like this. And Medicine Hat says that keeping them homeless costs about $100,000 a year and housing them costs $20,000. So it's a win-win, really. If we can house them and save money, then I really don't see how... Uh, then we, we can turn a negative into a positive, right? Now, one of your goals is to also clean up the downtown core, Colton. What would you do to make our city centre safer and even more inviting to visit and do business in? Well, I think, um, well, a big problem is the homelessness downtown. And they, they, you go down there and you, you, know, you see 20, 30 at a time just roaming around. So once we give those people a place to go and some sort of purpose and something to do and clean up their lives, then uh, we can also um, allocate more police officers on foot walking around. I mean, I see security guards everywhere at every business. And if we had a little bit of help from the police, maybe we could set them up on uh, foot patrols, um, high, high uh, crime areas where they could hang out and, you know, maybe take them off of um, sitting at a four way stop for traffic somewhere or allocate them differently in that sense. So a million dollars was recently taken out of the police budget here in Lethbridge. Would you put that money back in? And if so, why? I think there's lots of money. We just need to allocate the money differently. You know, we have, I would have to look at where, where all the police are, but I see lots of police city, like I said, in traffic, sitting at four-way stops, sitting at uh, check stops. Um, we have photo radar guys everywhere, everywhere. Maybe we should allocate those resources to crime. Until we, until we get a handle on it, and once we do, then maybe we can go back to creating more revenue through traffic fines. Now, part of your platform, Colton, is if you were to become mayor, a People Helping People program. What exactly is that, and what would it look like? Well, I would start it off just with myself and a phone, and if you have any issues, you can call me, say you just want to tell me I'm doing a bad job, or maybe you need a ride to work, or you don't have a family support system to help you. And you just need like a leg up. Sometimes people get down and it's not necessarily their fault. And if you don't have someone to give you a hand, then you just end up kind of in that perpetual cycle of destruction. 
So it would start with me, and ultimately, I want to create a self-supporting program through volunteers that are more morally inclined, who just want to help people out, you know? So not everyone has big, I have a big family, so I, I really wouldn't use this, but I know some people don't, or maybe their family doesn't see eye to eye to them. Whatever the case, they'll have somewhere they can call and either maybe give their opinion on how to change the city or help it, or maybe you just need a ride to work, or maybe, you know, anything, no, no, no restrictions on it. Now, you speak of wanting to see decentralized decision-making here in our city. Can you explain really what you mean by that? Well, right now, we're taking a lot of dictates from uh, provincial and national authorities, and they don't always suit our best need. So I think if we decentralize those decisions and make a more specific approach, as long as we're following the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is the supreme law of the land, <clears throat> then we can make better decisions for everyone to, to succeed, right? Um, this past year, I worked a lot of security through the shutdowns and everything. And, you know, you just see through after locking everyone down and putting them out of business, you know, one of the unintended consequences was more homeless people, which sometimes a good idea, people have a good idea, but they don't think about the unintended consequences. So if we make our own decisions locally, then I think that we'll fare better for, uh, you know, for the big decisions and the more local decisions as well. Colton, most candidates agree that our city needs more transparency and accountability. Now, if you're elected mayor, how would you help turn things around? Well, I think right now we're choosing a lot of policy just based on, you know, good intentions and good thoughts. But the outcomes aren't always the best. So we have a good idea, we put a bunch of money into it, and then we kind of turn our heads and look the other way and expect things to go good. So I think choosing programs that have a good track record and then following up, you know, you gotta be there every day, making sure things are running smooth, things are running good, asking people, how are things going? You know, you don't just turn your back, look the other way, and then expect everything to get better. Also, if we can't fix a problem, we need to know who is the problem, who's in the way or what. Right, because sometimes if we're not getting the votes, we need to know if we want to fix homelessness, who we need to get out to get the proper votes in so that we can fix homelessness. Or maybe there's other barriers in the way, but just telling the public what is in the way, why isn't this happening? You know, there should be more discussion and more involvement with everyone in the community. Colton, let's talk a bit about reconciliation. A lot of Canadians are talking about that right now. We have that new national holiday, Truth and Reconciliation, on September the 30th. How important is that for you, considering we have the Blackfoot Confederacy right out our back door here? Well, yeah, there's, it's a horrible, horrible atrocity. And, you know, the more, a lot of these things that were done by the government. So, I mean, one of my things is to um, shorten the scope of government. So, I think that... Uh, you know, I <laughs> I would put the blame on the government, and I think the solution would to make sure this doesn't happen again is to reduce the scope of the government. Now, the issue of poor parking availability, both at Lethbridge College and the University of Lethbridge, is something that you would like to address. What do you think is the solution? I think between the parking officials, they're, they're giving away lots of tickets. We need to try and reduce that because those are those are our entrepreneurs. Our children are, you know, our kids from 18 to 25. We want them taking risks and seems like we're drowning them in doubt, debt and tickets. And if we could maybe reduce the traffic fines and then build some infrastructure, I mean, we have lots of land in this country. We could easily build more parking lots or, you know, um, two-story structures, get some funding provincially. There's lots of, I know there's lots of funding for uh, electric trains, but there doesn't seem to be too much for parking for the uh, university and college kids. So I'm sure we could find the money somewhere. And there's lots of land we can make more uh, more parking and i know there's also charged for parking so if we could talk to whoever's in charge at the college or universities and try and maybe give them a break and uh you know just make enough parking so they can park there and educate themselves instead of them having to run around and try you know try not to get fines and then have to deal with fines while going to school i know that must be tough Colton, COVID-19 is still an issue as we've seen case counts continue to rise here in Alberta. If you're elected mayor, how would you go about handling things here in Lethbridge? Would you maybe like to see another face covering bylaw implemented? I would end all mandatory mandates. Um, that would include masks, vaccines. I would, um, I would recommend civil disobedience for things that are go against the constitution and charter of rights and freedoms since that is the supreme law of the land and just allow adults to make their own decisions. I mean, the people are smart. They know, they know how to 
If they want to wear, want to wear masks, they can. If they want to wash their hands, um, vitamin C, vitamin D, working out, all these things are great. Um, and then just educating. I would just work on educating the people on the best ways to deal with the COVID pandemic. Our city seems to kind of divide it right now over whether or not to have supervised consumption sites and injection sites. How do you see things? Should our city maybe set up another permanent SCS? Or is there a better way to reduce the drug use and crime here in our city? I think the police policies and laws that they're enforcing ultimately dictates the crime. So you see places like Portugal where they decriminalized all drugs. They have less drug use. It's cheaper because you're not sending drug addicts to jail and they're using a rehabilitation approach and the addicts are getting better at a faster rate. Children are using less drugs and just across the board, it's better in every way. So I think we need police to get on board and stop treating these people like criminals. We need to stop prosecuting petty amounts of drugs, decriminalize, you know, decriminalize all small amounts of drugs. I mean, they're doing the drugs anyway. The more we're attacking it, the more that we find them, the more they go into jail and get in this perpetual cycle of destruction, and that's not good for anyone. I mean, the people are shooting up in the streets. So the war on drugs is an obvious failure and it's not working. It's just prohibition 2.0. So I think we need a more compassionate approach. So you believe that we should have a permanent SES set up once again in our city, maybe working your way to the, or it's the four pillars, including intox and detox beds? Because some people that had a problem with the original SES were saying we were just enabling. That's all. There was no real good solution there. I mean, I would prefer rehabilitation centers, um, housing, and then, um, I mean, if, if you have your own house, anything you want to do inside your own house is fine. A bar is essentially a safe consumption site, so it's not that much different. But if we can get these people on their feet, rehabilitated in a home where they're functional, um, people are going to do drugs no matter what. We're not going to stop that. But yeah, I would definitely, I wouldn't support anything downtown in the core of the center, but if we could build facilities, you know, more on the outskirts of places where there's not businesses right beside to be uh, distracted and then uh, use a more rehabilitation approach and then housing and then go from there. Colton, many see small businesses as the backbone of the Canadian economy, in particular right here in Alberta. What would you do to improve the business climate for business people? Many have struggled during the COVID-19 pandemic. Firstly, I would reduce taxes. That's, uh, that's the biggest thing is saving people money. Uh, secondly, I would uh, promote civil disobedience. If the, if the government wants you to enforce things like masks or shut your business down, that's that goes against the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So I would recommend businesses just stay open and carry on business as usual. The whole crime situation, I mean, we have security at, at, business, at all these places in town. I think we need to allocate more police officers to the high crime areas to maybe just sit outside businesses and have, have their uh, appearance known, right? If they're sitting outside of places, then most likely criminals won't come and bug the businesses. So I think that's a good approach, too, is using the police officers and resources we have. But ultimately, we, we can't be uh, hurting them with all these mandates. I mean, mandate after mandate, the businesses are hurting already. And I know lots that have gone under and lots of people tell me that if they shut down again, they will go under. That'll be it. So, I mean, we can't, we can't do, keep doing that, and I don't think we can do it even one more time. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't support any lockdowns or anything like that. So, Colton, bottom line, brass tacks. Why should our viewers vote for you on October the 18th to become the next mayor of Lethbridge? <laughs> well, Albert Einstein said that you can't solve any problem from the same state of consciousness that it was created in. And I believe that all the other candidates are kind of have the same ideas and the same philosophies. And I'm a little bit different. I see things a little bit differently. Um, they're more, more than likely all into forced coercion. I'm more of a volunteerist. I like to concentrate on a more broad spectrum analysis, you know, looking at economics, philosophy, um, psychology, everything together, seeing what happened in the past, using history as the best marker of what to do because nothing is new under the sun. Everything's been done. So we can see exactly how to change things for the better. We just need to do the proper things that have worked in the past. Colton Menzak is one of the Lethbridge mayoral candidates in the upcoming Alberta municipal election. Colton, thanks for your time today. Thank you.